Good news, bad news kind of morning right here. Um, I am without my fellow badge bros, and I couldn't leave the people hanging because I am not an expert in anything. So I had to bring on a definitive thought leader to right the ship because I'm without my cohorts. Uh, we're bringing on DJ Mitchell, a.k.a. DJ Sabes, last year's best puck champion. What was the contest called last year again? It wasn't best puck, was it? I lost you. Yeah, today. you're muted. It was best puck. I, I was muted. I was I was muted. I'm not anymore. Yeah, no, it was best puck. You're the same um, as my normal. Yeah. Uh, you're the no, same it, as my normal hosts. <laughs> I I always mute myself to start just to be like just in case like there's a noise in the background right when people are like what the but no no yeah uh, yeah best puck <laughs> two this is best puck three which they've changed every year, the contest structure and how it works, but um, it's bigger. It's not as big as I hoped, but it's like the top prize is what I was hoping for. I know we're going to get into it, but um, mm -hmm. yeah, I think, I think they could have given us a little more, but it's okay. You know what? The hockey bros are happy to just to be involved, just to have a, just to have something in the game because I know no other side's going to do it besides underdog. Absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, we're always, that's an evergreen statement that we're always going to want it to be bigger, regardless of what sport it is, what contest it is. Like we're always just cheering for it to get bigger, get bigger, get bigger. Right. So yeah, I mean, it's it, the top prize is, is uh 15,000 more than the one you won last year. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's a pretty good year yeah. over year increase if we just, you know, um yeah speaking of which let's pull up let's pull up last year's here just to reiterate to the people that you are the definitive best puck thought leader here last year's team um structure wise and stuff for this year this contest is your strategy going to mirror something as what we saw from this winning roster last year or do you think the contest has changed enough where this isn't really what we're aiming to do uh so as of right now, it's going to stay the exact same. Also, I'm, I'm wearing my Gensel jersey. Oh, um, he's your um, boy? I, I've been Probably. trying to trying to accumulate. Uh, so yeah, it was actually Russ' goal that cemented it for me. Um, not assisted by Gensel, but I bought the Gensel jersey because I just I actually love Jake Gensel as well. So in case you're wondering about, about that, I, I am trying to get every jersey from every player on the team. And so far... I got, I got, I got Yossi right there. I got, I got a majority of them. So we're going to get there. That's in case you're, good. In case you're Is Carlson on this team? Carlson's not on this yeah. team, no? No, he was my highest exposure player though. So I oh, felt, okay. I felt obligated because I mean, he just, I mean, you can make, I mean, that would literally, I made the comparison and I think it's actually perfect. It would be like you drafted 45% Dawson Knox this year and he was tight end number one. Like I don't think Carlson actually finished as defenseman number one, but he was either one or two. And he was going in like the 15th round. So, um, and there's only 16 rounds in hockey. So it was pretty crazy. He ended up moving up to maybe the 13th by the end of it. But yeah, he, I owe him quite a bit, a uh, debt of gratitude. Um, anyways, your original question was about structure. A 15th round defenseman who ended up with a hundred points. Yeah. 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 So that's where he started. And I think a lot of people started to realize like, wait a minute. Like what's going on with Eric Carlson? And uh, then he rose pretty quickly. Uh, a lot of people jumped on it that were sharp. So uh, my like nearly hundred percent exposure got whittled down pretty fast over time. But um, that's what happens in hockey, and it's so much softer. I get people that are like, uh, I don't know much about hockey, and I'm like, you don't need to. Like it's not even. <laughs> it's okay. I you don't you can know nothing, and you're probably going to be better than four of the twelve drafters in these lobbies. Um, so yeah, to get back to your point about structure. It's going to stay about the same. Uh, I don't think I'm going to deviate much from the 3733 three, three structure that I won with. Um, I have once so far, and I mean, I have, I have 30 slow drafts going. So I guess there's one of them that I'm, I'm already know I'm going to deviate from, but it's going to be like maybe 130 of the 150 are going to be this 3733 three, three structure, um, especially because if you get a top four pick, you're going to get one of those top four centers. And it's just really hard to assume that we're going to get another Jack Hughes like scenario where Jack Hughes, I mean, I, if you listen to our morning skate podcast or revisit from last year, I got him in, at 90th overall and he ended up being, mm -hmm. I think the 10th or 11th highest scoring player. Like, I don't think that that's going to happen again, especially because he's already going like eighth overall. Um, so some of these player takes you, you can still find. I do think there's a good case to be made for upside in the later rounds for a lot of guys, but um, 
making up the ground you're going to lose with one of those top four centers by just like overdrafting centers is probably a bad strategy. Um, when two wingers are going to score each week, I think you're just better off kind of trying to accumulate as much wealth as possible there. And then, you know, everything else is going to kind of find its way, especially because like, I think the difference between centers after you get out of that top four is a lot narrower, if you will, than with wing. I think with wing, it's very wide, the margin between certain wingers, especially later in rounds, but you can still get some very, very, very good centers because that's just normally your best player on your team. It's going to be your top center and you can get top centers in the 16th round. So we'll get into that. So um, that, that might be a better answer. Um, the okay. one deviation I've made so far compared to last year, though, I'll give you the one strategy tip that I'm seeing a lot of sharper players get in on is that last year goalies were going way earlier, early on, and now they're slipping back. So I'm barely leaving a top, you know, top five rounds without a starting goalie. Um, and that's just because last year we were getting Igor Shostrykin going like 10th overall, and now he's going like 25th overall. That's a bit too far down the line. That's, so um, it's really been the only big change so far. Okay. 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 So that's a good initial uh, starting point. I, I like I like to bring up the roster from last year, like in the same way that people bring up like Crane's BBM one. It's like, can we really learn from this? I don't know. Maybe there's a couple takeaways, but it's just good for a benchmark, like starting point to be like, okay, this is what won. All right, now we can talk about like the actual player takes and the structures yeah. and the strategies it's, that go wow. moving forward. Would you okay? Would yeah, you I, say like this roster from last year, like you built 150 of them last year, was this like one of your better ones that at the at the at the end of draft season you would have been like, oh, this one had a chance, or was this just kind of like what they all looked like? Okay. Um, so first I'm going to answer this by saying, I know this was one that was drafted a bit earlier on because of the, you know, getting dry cycle and Jack Hughes. I know I got him a lot later. Um, I, I would say that you can learn a couple of things from this roster, but it's, I don't think it's completely repeatable and it definitely, I mean, every, every roster is going to have to get really lucky in the playoffs. Um, I, I think the, the two things I take away from this roster, if you're just like trying to say like, what can I learn from this roster is correlation is in, in everything. And I think a lot of people assume like you have to be crazy with court. And I've seen a lot of people, especially newer drafters that just come over and they're just hammering one team early on. Um, like I have the Gensel rust. Okay. Yep. And I have the Arvidsson Fiala. Sure. I think that's it for correlation. That's it. Like you don't need to go insane. Um, I also think the other thing to learn here is like really try to figure out which players, especially like later round defensemen, like Mike Matheson have that kind of upside in them. I was banging the drum for Mike Matheson. It didn't happen early on. He kind of had some injury problems going into the season, into the season. But when Roman Yossi was out, Mike Matheson stepped up, put on the you know mm -hmm. Superman cape and won me 10 K. You have to try to find guys that are going to a have good rates all around with all of the different uh, points that you can get within blocking shots, hitting, et cetera, and have power play one upside. And Mike Matheson had that and was going undrafted largely. So I think it's, it's, it's less of like thinking, I, th I think people get bogged down in like what other fantasy touts, especially like the NHL.coms. And, and a lot of those are saying, instead of saying, okay, this is not the same structure. This is not the same format. Um, I'm not taking again, like, and this is, I'm a, I'm a Sabres fan. I'm not taking low in power ever because there's guys in that last round, that 16th round that just have way more upside and Owen power's path to actually getting to that top level would mean at least Rasmus Dahlin gets hurt. And even if that happens, I still don't see any scenario where he's outscoring, you know, a lot of guys in that last round. So I would say that don't overdo it with correlation. Get some. It's important, but it's not the most important thing. Like getting Jack Hughes, like that, I and mean, that's going to be an example you can't repeat, but getting a guy that has that kind of upside later and getting him well past what his ADP should be in an efficient market is way, way, way more important then, oh, I need to get Zach Hyman here. It's like, okay, well, you can do that, but you're not going to win 10K, in my opinion, or about 25K. Like, try to take advantage of an inefficient market. And that's the ecosystem we're in right now. Okay. We're still in a very inefficient market. Yeah, so we are, we are in the IKB window of, like, buying the wrong priced ADPs right now. And correlation oh, yeah. isn't nearly the, the, the mindset factor. 
Okay, cool. Yeah, no. I like that. I think that's a really good summary of it. Um, we're going to run back an exercise, which we've done with DJ in the past and what we did with uh, NBA and um, MLB in recent memory, where we just do the rapid fire on the uh, 101 questions. But before we do so, just a reminder for everyone that um, Morning Skate Pod, that's where you can find DJ Mitchell and uh, Matt Moody all the time doing, you guys do that one every day during the season, right? Not every day yet. Uh, no, no. So it's every big contest plus okay. almost every Tuesday, Thursday. And then, I mean, we're always in the discord. We're always posting stuff. We're always retweeting lineups. Um, and then, yeah, we're kind of doing weekly best ball stuff right now. We're going to do you know, last week was kind of the review this week. We're going to do a lot of player takes and, and some stuff of that nature because we're still waiting for the data. Um, so the, the data, like we're basically going to take all our priors and keep them going unless there's anything crazy we find in the data. But what we're really going to focus on is optimizing for the finals going forward, because we think that's what we kind of were missing last year, because the first year of the finals was like 10 teams. We didn't really learn much from that. Now we have like 47 at, or was it 66 or 67 teams. At least we can learn a little bit more. So that going forward, we're going to take like, okay, we learned a lot. We knew we did a lot, right. We're going to, you know, we know our players, we know how to uh, do rankings, et cetera. How can we optimize for the finals? And that's going to be kind of the last key to see how much correlation it's, might actually matter comparatively to what I said. Yeah, it's interesting because the the kind of um, trajectory of all these games is that's not NFL is slowly like one, maybe two years behind where we started oh, yeah. optimizing for like week <laughs> yeah. 17, like two years ago. And now all of a sudden it's like, Hey, building in buckets like this and these correlation patterns and does week 15 through six through 17 now matter. And now comparatively now in the best puck streets only being third year of the contest, only time where it's like the finals getting a little bit bigger. It's like, Ooh, does correlation matter? Right. So it's like, it's funny yeah, to see how that. much yeah, yeah. correlation. And then like, you're, like the week, so that everyone's already kind of taught. I already posted the schedule for the NHL. Um, I was mm -hmm. made by someone in our discord and people are already like, Oh, how do I optimize for this? And I'm like, does it actually matter? I mean, Pittsburgh was kind of a, the case last Pittsburgh, Boston were the two teams that were like, okay, these are really good teams. Plus they have a good final schedule. Um, mm -hmm. so we're, I'm going to start looking into that a bit more, but it is, well, I, I got it. I, I, I got it. Do a draft. Yeah. I got it pulled up on the side right now. So I'm going to make you look into it yep, real yep. time. I got I, it pulled up. It, I'm like, ready. it doesn't, it doesn't not matter. I'm sure. Like, I'm sure it does have mm -hmm. some, but like a player getting one hat trick in one game in the finals, it's like, they can play one game and they're probably scoring for you while a player right. can play six games and literally be injured like Roman Yossi last year, which was like, he probably could have came back, but that team was dead. So it's like, yeah, you can't predict that. So it's like, to me, it's, I don't know. I, 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 again, I would, I'm, a, I, I'm, yeah, sorry. No, no. I, I would liken it similar to baseball opposed to basketball because basketball, it's like, if you have more games in the finals, you're, you're going to score more points because it's an accumulative game right yeah. every time they're on the floor there's a point per minute associated with that and that player's accumulating that whereas in hockey and baseball it's like binary outcome stuff where it's like they either score or they don't score even if they play 20 yeah. minutes that night that night they're not going to be accruing any points that are going to be relative to your scoring in best ball unless they you know have a couple power play points yeah. and you know a goal and assist and a block that night or whatever right yeah. so Ex similar yeah, to baseball that. where it's like the extra game is like, well, it's great to have it because you get four more ABs, but that could easily just be an 0 for 4, right? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, it's like you get a player that gets one shot on goal in the game comparatively to a guy that has like one goal. It's, I mean, it's just so vastly different. So, yeah, I, I agree. Um, we'll, we'll get yeah. into it though. Uh, and then I just wanted to bring up uh, speaking to the data when you uh, when you said you guys are sifting through the data and and projections and stuff aren't done yet. That stuff will be at puckluck.com, correct? Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna have two different offerings uh, for anyone that's a full time member. It's all gonna be there for you, and then we're gonna just have like a best puck thing. It, it's gonna cost money, and then we're also gonna be back on bricks overlay tool again, which was incredibly helpful. Which is why I kind of slowed down my fast drafting for now. Um, I'm 15 okay. in on fast, 30 on slow, but I, I really, really like having that. Um, just, it's going to have our rankings. We can add some more things. I, I don't know what Bricks wants to do. Cause I asked him like three questions and he just said, yes, absolutely. It sounds perfect. And I'm like, all right, well, like, let me, I, 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 cause I said it tries to do 
I mean, I don't know how much you know about it if you use it, but it tries to do the auto drafting. Mm -hmm. But right now it's just like picking the best ADP player. I think it's just okay. assuming like, I know I can't figure this out. So you probably want the guy that no one else is taking. So um, uh, it also like correlate. So in hockey, your defenseman is orange. That's quarterback, right? I'm trying to think through it. Uh, like when you're drafting uh, in football. Oh my God. I was just doing a yeah. BBM whatever too. I'm like, what the hell color is it? <laughs> whatever color, whatever. I think it, I, so I think it's, it's purple. And it's quarterback purple. Quarterback's purple. It's purple. Quarterback's purple. So center, yeah. and, so center it, it assumes your center. And yeah, no, it's, that's right. Because then defenseman is winger. So it, it always tries to like highlight the defenseman with your centers mm -hmm. in the overlay tool. And he said he was going to look into it, but I mean, I don't, I, I honestly, it just doesn't like, you should just, it doesn't matter. Like it's it, it fine. It it's like, pass like, catcher. It, it yeah, thinks it's yeah, passer it tight end every time. Right. Yeah. Okay. I got you. Right. Right. So like, um, like it, but it doesn't give you the winger and center, which are definitely probably a better correlation because it's like that's yeah. a running back. You don't want you don't want to put that with your quarterback. Like, All right, fair enough. Oh, uh, yeah, that's that'll be back good. for sure. Which I thought was yeah. I mean, it was just like I, I think if you're maxing this and you're not using that tool, mm -hmm. um, especially if you're using our rankings, it, it's just like you're just causing a giant headache for like like twenty five bucks. Like I, I don't know. It's just like what what's the point? But um, yep. yeah, no, I feel that. Um, best puck classic. It's ten dollars to enter this year. Uh, fourteen k. Uh, you start one of every position except for the winger position. The winger position you start two, and then uh, one flex. Um, yeah. there we go. Yeah, just covering yeah, the easy. In, yeah. yeah, just covering yeah. the easy bases to start there. Um, anything you want to say about the scoring format, the structure, or whatever that we should be paying attention to? other than kind of like the obvious power play correlated uh, center winger mm -hmm. dynamic feels kind of like feels good. But as you alluded to off the yeah. top is not necessary. Um, anything jump out about the scoring system specifically on underdog? Um, I mean, hits blocks and uh, shots on goal count. So mm -hmm. those factor in a lot more than you'd think. Um, it, it just adds a, a different dimension that I think a lot of people don't, factor into their rankings at all, especially when it comes to the, the bigger sites that truly are just making shit up like NHL.com. Um, so just try to be cognizant of that. Uh, uh, the goalies doesn't matter stuff that we talk about in DFS does matter here. We talked about it a little bit in our first show. I know I, I see GA in there just talking about, it. yeah, like I hate goalies. They're dumb, but like they really matter here. Um, mm -hmm. So definitely, like I was saying right off the top, like I think, considering goalies a bit earlier is definitely better and there's a lot of goalies that are going very very late that are having like i think have higher uh overall upside and a lot of people are just afraid of bad teams they're like mm -hmm. i couldn't possibly draft carter hart well like his peak week might be higher than another team's goalies peak week that's a better team because he's going to make a lot more saves and if you notice with this it's like 0. 0.6 points a save like I, I think you can uh, do yourself a service with that. And then the last thing, and you, I think you kind of mentioned it, and I know you wanted to touch on it, is that only two teams advance instead of three. I'm not really changing much of what I did, but it, it definitely to me feels like, um, you know, it, it's going to weed out, I think, a lot more of the truly bad teams, which, which I like. Uh, I just wish that, um, uh, okay, how, so last year you doubled up if you advanced. This year you don't. So that's why it's a lot higher uh top heavy but okay which i like for hockey for the grand prize but if you're getting into this contest thinking like oh, if i advance i make money you don't anymore so i wouldn't try to just get out there and, and you know if you're having a bad draft it's not going your way just trying to like i don't know i don't really know how you'd even try to do that but i would you know still try to build you're building for the finals a little bit more than before um because of how top heavy it is i like that okay yeah, I think this is kind of something we've seen structurally that, um, you know, Underdog did it with the seventh inning stretch contest and they've started to do it more now where it's like, hey, that min cash is just actually money back and now we can um, like top heavy the prize pools more effectively yeah. without people like losing as much money. Yeah, so playing for just like min caches and advance rates like those slightly profitable shouldn't be the end goal of our roster construction. Um, right, let's right. jump into that. Let's talk about our roster construction. Right. You alluded to it right there. You said three seven three three. That's kind of feels like our benchmark. Or is that right? Yeah, we, we go we go yeah, center yeah, winger yeah. D man. Okay, 
Yeah, so that's kind mm-hmm. of like what we would equate to a two six eight two in uh, in the uh, M- uh, NFL streets. Yeah, yeah, I would say that's yeah, yeah, and you're going to see a a lot of teams drafting that way, which also like is going to raise the value of winger even more. It's kind mm-hmm. of you know kind of like a self fulfilling pro- prophecy over time too. So, um, a lot of the ADPs on wingers is just going to continue to rise because of it, and the centers are going to fall in the later rounds. Okay, cool. So then if we're doing like the positional comp stuff, my mind goes that the centers are like the premium wide receivers and then the yeah. the wingers are kind of like running back where you take like the scattered shots at. Yeah, it's weird to say because it's like we want more wingers. We normally want more wide receivers. So like in a constructural uh-huh. sense, but I think that like the top le- – <sighs> It's it's really hard. It's not perfect, honestly. It's really hard to do with, yeah, with sure. football and, oh, and hockey. Um, I th- I think you can. I mean, again, because like, and then it's like, okay, so what? Are quarterbacks goalies, but you don't need to correlate your goalie at all. Like, it really doesn't matter that right. much. I, I, if you're if you're like, oh man, I have to like your goalie. A, they're not going to. I mean, assist on a goal. I don't even think they count that in underdog scoring for uh for for goalies. So like. The only thing you can make a case for is like, oh, if a play if a team does really well in the finals, their goalie might see more shots because they're winning. And like you could try to go down that rabbit hole, but probably not relevant. So I think the the, the really the only one is that like the top level wide receiver, top level center, and then I know we did one before. Like defensemen are kind of like tight ends in a sense, where there's some that are like okay. you're kind of like premium bully tight end builds equate better to like a you know, premium defense build. And there's just like a, a nice cohort that are very, 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 very good. Um, and then there's a lot of guys that are all like, like just, uh, I think a decent step below. Um, and, and you can okay. build really, really sound teams with three defensemen that are going after the 10th round, but mm. you're, you know, you're, you're losing a lot of, of equity and you're hopefully making that up at wing. Um, so I think that that, that comparison is good. And then, yeah, I don't know. I mean, if you <laughs> right yeah, the rest of it, are, it's kind of just, yeah, it's kind of imperfect. No, 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 that's good. That's yeah. good. No, it's, a, I mean, I think it's, it's knowledge in and of itself, DJ, to be like, uh, yeah, it's just like an imperfect comp. Like, don't try and think about it in the same regard. And it's like, oh yeah, that's, yeah, that's, because, that's yeah, great advice. It's so, it's so <laughs> hard because set, like centers, like you think like centers being anything, I, I almost do think they're more like receivers. Cause like you could get a late round receiver sometimes that can boom like a late round center, but then again, like I think it's the same with I think they're kind of like it's all like the the, the, dip, the big difference. Honestly, the best way to put it is like in NFL, the odds of that late round receiver or running back being a top performer is much, much lower than in hockey. Like okay. I think getting a guy in the 16th round that ends up being a top 20 player is like incredibly likely to happen in hockey, where in, in football it's very unlikely. So um, I think like having player takes and like having a better construction um of like like I'm overexposed in hockey way more often to certain players than I am in football because I of, of the, that theory. If that does that make sense? Is that good enough? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, I okay. really like that point. So getting overexposed, okay. we can't think about it in the same way because like we like to be like, hey, we can't pick the best wide receiver. We're historically really bad at picking the best wide receiver in the 16th to 18th round. We're historically really bad at picking the breakout pitcher from rounds 15 to 20 in baseball. Whereas in hockey, if you get overexploitative with some of these player takes, that's where your Carlson comes from last year. That's where your Jack Hughes from last year comes from. So getting getting exploitative feels like very good in these streets. I like this. This is more player takey. I like it. Um, we alluded to, I think we can kind of like skip some of these. Like the zero RB kind of like doesn't really yeah. correlate perfectly. I guess that's that. just like, Kind of like punting winger and loading up late would yeah. be the. I, I would I, I would say it's uh, the better equation would be like if you ever pick outside of the top four, which is going to happen obviously most often, and just like compl- mm-hmm. completely waiting on center until like the tenth, eleventh mm. round. Um, it's probably a, a better scenario. Um, just be, but again, like I think you're way more likely to hit with this theory in hockey comparatively to NFL which is why I do it way more often, honestly. And like in, in, in football, like I'm not, uh, like I'm a zero RB bro in a sense, but I'm normally grabbing one a lot earlier than maybe most zero RB bros do. Because again, like I think that disparity is much larger 
larger. In hockey, it's much smaller. Okay. Yeah, I like that. Um, the week 17 and the stacking, they kind of go hand in hand. I have the chart pulled up that, uh, at least I thought I did. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll pull it up in a second, but there is, yeah, there is a playoff it. chart floating around here where it tells us the amount of regular season games that teams are playing and then how many they're playing in round one, round two and round three mm-hmm. of the final. Sorry. Um, but the week 17 stuff, do you venture to guess? I know you haven't sifted through all the data yet, but do you venture to guess that like there will be something in your model that suggests like, hey, Anaheim's going to be a pace up team and the Rangers are going to be a pace up team and somehow they play each other twice in the finals. That gives them a slight bump. Do we think we're going to get that micro with the stacking and the week 17 stuff this year? Uh I don't think it's necessary because of how soft okay. the contest is already. But if you want to, okay. if you want to try to go down that rabbit hole, like that, I, I highly doubt it. I think that I think what the data is going to show us is that picking in the top four is just unbelievably helpful, <laughs> and uh, that if you don't pick in the top four, you got to get really lucky to have a chance in the finals, which is unfortunate for this contest. But that's just the way it's going to be. Um, I think that's going to show us that. Um, correlation is important but you have to be very particular with your correlation i think that's one thing people aren't getting as much into which i think that's why when we get to the draft i'll maybe explain that a little bit more but i think that people are casting a much wider net on correlation in hockey because of football like there's so many obvious like every quarterback receiver correlation and tight end is just like that's obviously good but in hockey like Mm -hmm. it's not that it's bad but it's not nearly as concise like Taking Nathan McKinnon and then the last round saying, like, I'm taking Jonathan Duran. Why just an easy example, a guy that like might go in the last round. They may never, or not never, but like very, very rarely touch the ice together because they're might not, they're probably not in the first power play together, and they might not be line mates. So again, like I think it's being more precise. And then um goalies. I think that point was made again by GA. It's like I think goalies is where week 17 might matter the most because uh last year we saw it with Georgiev, we saw it with Olmark. Um, guys that just yep. started like every single game in the playoffs because they needed them. Now, Olmark mm-hmm. was to chase a record while uh, Georgia was to make sure they kind of cemented a playoff spot. Uh, I think that's more important. I think it's more important for goalie than anything else. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, I like where your head's at. And when we keep alluding to this top four and we keep talking about the centers, you do currently agree with the ADP. Like this is the definitive top four that we're referring to over and over again. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, my order might be a slightly different, but I'm not, sure. I, but that doesn't mean I'm even taking it differently. Like I don't think the ADP is going to change much. So I want exposure to all four of them. And last year that was my big point was like, if you just say I'm only taking Austin Matthews, well, what happens when he gets hurt and his wrist is messed up and he can't mm-hmm. shoot like he used, right. And that's what happened. And that's why when ADP started, cause people were like, where are they getting this ADP from? Well, it's like, well, Austin Matthews was a lot worse last year. And like, so was Roman Yossi, for example, another guy that I was like taking in every draft because they got injured and they just said, okay, mm-hmm. well, their points were this, this is their order now. And it was incredibly inefficient and it's getting there again. Um, but like mm-hmm. Roman Yossi is legitimately probably, I mean, I would say he could be defenseman number one, but Kale McCarr also got injured. So it's hard to say like, they're both right there. So it's like, yeah. Um, Point being that you can take those four in any order and feel good. I wouldn't get over exposed to one unless if you're doing like two, three drafts or whatever, just to test it. You really love one player, but they're all McDavid a, a big step ahead. Like he should be. I know someone made the joke in uh, Badge Bros. Like he should be eighty three point nine. It's like yeah, he should be. Like he's clearly <laughs> number one in the other three. It's like do do whatever you want, but if you're drafting one hundred fifty, I would try to be as evenly exposed as possible. Yeah, McDavid's the closest thing we've seen to the Gretzky of back in the day where you had to draft his goals and his assists uh, separately. <laughs> yeah. That's this is as close yeah. as we'll get in this era. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I would say Shoni Atani, but like that would just be dis- I think Shoni Atani is still just like a bit better because it would be like if Connor McDavid just suited up in net sometimes and was like, I also have, you know, the best, I'm the best goalie in the league too. It's like, all right. Well, every 50, you know, every 50 day yet, he plays so. between the pipes. Holy shit. Well, the sick thing about Edmonton, every team. the sick thing about Edmonton is they could probably use them between the pipes at some point, right? Like 
They've they've been looking for a goalie yeah, for years. I, yeah, it, it is it is like one of those things where like you, you feel like something's gotta be wrong because they go out and they get Jack Campbell and he just doesn't work out. And like Stuart Skinner looked good, but it, it like it's truly amazing that this team with the top two players in ADP, like imagine that. Like I'm trying to think like that would be like I'm sure at one point if we had best ball during like the the heat run, maybe that could have happened where one and two ADPs were like on the heat, but like that is absurd in the NHL to think about. And it's not even wrong and this team is just like can't get to the with the conference finals like it's just like what yeah what's going on um oh, it's sad. well yeah, it, but... it is eerily similar to otani and trout it's eerily similar to otani and trout yeah. where every single year they set the world on fire they're at the top and they just trout's never played a playoff game like it just doesn't make sense yeah. you know like yeah it's crazy yeah. um yeah. okay so the stacking stuff we will we will touch on the on the chart but i think that might be a exercise for um a different day but this is the sicko chart it hangs out in the discord there um is. yeah i can zoom it in a little bit there people can see uh but that's kind of like what we've grown accustomed to breaking down and seeing from basically uh every sport now like we're kind of in this this mode where we we understand that these games are scored weekly and this there is value in doing this once you get yeah. into the advancement rounds so um what we do with this in the future, not entirely sure yet, but it is there for people to mess around with. Um, yep. The stacking stuff, uh, are you prioritizing in 1v1 scenarios like a potential, like it's pretty safe to assume yes. that like Marner yeah. and, and Austin Matthews will be on PP1 together. It's maybe not as safe to assume like some of the fringe back end guys where your wish casting, like your Jonathan Drewen example there, I think really applies. Yeah. Um, to, to that uh but at the front end of draft boards are we prioritizing like pp1 line mates and stuff like that yeah yeah i mean i think of every draft as a decision tree and in every sport uh -huh. where every decision i'm making in every round is dictated by what's fallen into place for me so like if i have austin matthews and martyrs there that's probably going to happen unless and again like i'm not dictating that's going to happen because what if ovechkin's there like i'm just going to take ovechkin mm -hmm. you see what i'm saying but like Mm -hmm. that's very rarely going to happen. Um, so the, the point is the decision tree should be ADP slash your rankings at ADP, like, or where ADP is going to go, of course, at this point, because it's not even close to where it's going to finish. But okay. then definitely I'm looking at, uh, I'm looking at what the correlations are going to be because they will matter more in the finals. I think, especially as we move forward, um, like they just obviously do. Right. I mean, you think about DFS and if you play Austin Matthews without Marner, you could possibly win, but you know it's more likely than not that they're together going to be winning if that if, if that is the winning combination. So like, right. um, and and in DFS you have you know a much maybe wider cast of players to pick from on a nightly basis than like what the actual like total about. You know, that's maybe not the best comparison because like, but the, the point to be that like one player in your lineup outscoring Marner if Matthews goes on a god run in the finals is really going to be rare and others are probably going to have it. Um, if you know, so, cause they're just going to keep moving forward. They're really good. Um, yeah. I think that was like a very convoluted ways to say it's important, but not the most important. Got it. Cool. Yeah. No, I, I like the, I, li I like that. Um, the people's in the chat are asking some, some player takey stuff. So I want, I want actually yeah. want to just sure. take a pause sure. for a second here. The Kuzmanko one uh, rounds yeah. 14 through 16. Are you, are you pumping that one right now? I, I mean, I took it in the first three, three lobbies and then I was like, this is kind of out of control. Like it, it was funny because I thought last year they didn't have him in the lobby to start. Mm. And I was like, oh, he's not here. So and then I like looked and I was like, oh, he is here. And he was ranked below players. I shit you not that had gone to the Czech League. Um, mm. He was, I mean, now he's gone way up, but I took him in the first three lobbies and I have not been able to get him again. I don't think once because every time I queue him up, someone grabs him. There's a lot of Canucks fans that draft these things. I swear. I see like Canucks 101. I know there's some morning skate pod members that, so like, I just can't get him. And I, and I think Kuzbenko is like a, still a value probably, but like, he's not a very good rate shooter. He's much more of like, I don't even think like we had projected him to be like our Tommy Panarin which again is amazing, but he's just has a much better shot than Panarin, but he doesn't shoot as much as Panarin yet. So like maybe he takes a bigger jump in that category. Um, that's the concern with him, but that doesn't really matter if he has a peak week. It's still going to be because of goals on the power play. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, this guy, he was, I, I just remember seeing it was like Andre Kasha and then him. And I'm like, didn't Kasha go to the Czech league? Uh, okay. But yeah. <laughs> that's um, good. Yeah. But cause Manko power play, like, that's who they want shooting, but they, what if Vancouver could have their way. It would be Pedersen shooting or Kuzmenko and Kuzmenko preferably. And they're trying to just kind of like find a way to get that set up. Um, and luckily for them, they have, you know, JT Miller and uh, J- uh, Quinn Hughes. Uh, yeah. I'm going to say Jack Hughes at like Quinn Hughes. So like that power play is filthy and that team is still bad somehow. Yeah. Well, the, the thing, the thing I could speak to this one, I could, I got my, I got my Canucks uh, phantom hat on for a second here. Uh, Quinn, Quinn can sh- can't really shoot, right? Like, Quinn shot is glorified Troy Stetcher from the point, right? Like that's, that's what we're dealing with here. So always looking for like that rotational movement to then find like the one timer on PD side is like goal one zero one, but then both of Kuz and, uh, or sorry, uh, JT Miller being left-handed mm-hmm. on that left side. He always did that little like curl at the hash marks and then yep. walk in left side, left-handed. And then he either had, like the bumper played a bow in the middle, or he could throw the pass all the way across, right? As like a left-handed yeah. guy like this. Yeah. I think they prefer the traditional like umbrella setup where like Kuz is mm-hmm. open to it, right? Where it's less yeah. back turned for the rest of the play. I feel like I feel like you nailed it without even meaning to. Like the problem is, is that JT Miller has the mindset of like, I can score from here, but Kuz may mm-hmm can actually score from there and they just yeah. but jt miller's taking the <laughs> shot and then it's getting dumped down the ice and it's like jt stop it like you're not good <laughs> you're never going to be they need to switch their mindset right um yeah and i and again like jt miller might be another example of a guy going a bit too late after like disappointing but not really um and we'll, we'll get to him but yeah it, it was it was hilarious to see that adp because this guy had like 39 goals last year and right he was going it was going to be going undrafted um on, i mean in, in the first lot, I got him in the last round in the first lot because, like I said, I was like searching and searching and finally I had to like look up his name and I was like, oh crap, he's not in here. Um, so yeah, I, yeah. Um, so next player to take question. That's great. Um, yeah, the next one was you alluded to you might not have the top four in the same yeah. order. Is it is it because you have McKinnon yeah. over uh, Leon? I would have McKinnon and Matthews over Leon personally. Um, and Leon won okay. me 10 K. So it's, it's, it's hard to say. Cause he was, he really <laughs> went God mode in the play. You kind of had to have him in the finals. Um, which, which is why, again, like that, that's why, cause he can do that. Like Leon Drysoto can score from anywhere. He can get on that kind of run with McDavid. That is otherworldly. Um, he does not shoot as much or should not shoot as much as McKinnon and Matthews. So I think as like a base level, like season long, they're probably projecting better, but, I mean, and all of them have the same peak upside. So, like, I would go McDavid, McKinnon, Matthews, Dreisaitl, but if ADP isn't going to change, I'm just going to draft them as they are and try to spread my exposures throughout. But that would, yeah, that would probably be Makes my sense. order. Makes sense. Um, um, yeah, just, will there like, any... Like, will there Dreisaitl be... shouldn't have the same upside shooting. Right. Okay. Okay, sorry. Will there be any um, kind of like galaxy brain, like late in draft season, it's your 145th entry where you will be like, I'm going to flip the board here and take Jack Hughes like with the 102 or will there be, or are you just sacrificing way too much to consider no. that? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That would, that would be All stupid. Right. Don't, don't do that. Yeah. So there's um, no, there's no yeah. like NFL range of outcomes in the first round it's conceivable that like Bijan Robinson can outscore Christian McCaffrey this season. It is not feasible yeah. that Jack Hughes will outscore Leon Drysdale. No, oh, no, I think it's, it's feasible, but like, I don't see why you'd do it. Like, cause it's like okay. to what end, like, unless if well, there's an injury. So like if they all, if they play the same amount of games, I think even if Jack Hughes does do that, which I think could happen with dry all over the rest. Yeah. Um, it's going to be by very little, no matter what, uh, just, if you, you play with Connor McDavid and you're actually good, like Ride Seidel, you just, you're, it's so hard to fail. Right. Yeah, that makes I mean, sense. It, yeah. So I, I would, yeah, I would say that, like, while it could happen, there's just no point, especially if you're doing 150, unless if you're like dramatically below what you want on Jack Hughes. Like, unless if you're like, mm-hmm. I have like 5% Jack Hughes, I guess at that point, whatever, but I wouldn't do it to like be, be sharp. It's probably stupid. Okay. Sounds good to me. Um, 
I think we can kind of bypass some of them because the positional comps don't like directly align. I'd like to ask about the onesies. The first thing you alluded to was goalies being pushed up a bit this year. Um, and kind of rightfully so yeah. in your mindset, like that round five tendy feels good. Yeah, I, they're they're pushed up because they're pushed back. Like last year, they were going in the first okay. round, very early second round, all the top guys, and now they're going in the third round, late second round, and it's just like it's a bit inefficient to me still. But and and I also think there's just a lot of goalies that are like incredibly high value that are going much later, like you said. So I'm I'm pushing it. Yeah. Okay, so we'll push it up. We'll push it up this year um, because the market is overcorrected to them falling too far, kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're falling. Be- and I think they're falling because of how inefficient ADP is that people are like, I can't not take Roman Yossi here. Like I, like it's right. way too far back. So then like, it's just kind of like pushing all the goalies back and it's just, they, they continue to fall in ADP. Um, so yeah, it, it, I think eventually it's going to, the ship's going to get on its right course, but it's still not there. Okay. Sounds good to me. Um, the, the one, the David Montgomery comp, who is that landmine, in the middle rounds right now, do you have a player take for me who feels uh, landminey? Uh, um, being being running back, I think it would probably be a winger or center in our analogy here. Yeah, but is there anyone who's kind of like going in the five through rounds five through seven that feels like the fake zero RB value right now? Uh, Jesper Bratt. Okay, I think he's probably the, yeah. I think that's probably the guy. Um, it's it's unfortunate, but that team, there's so many chefs in the kitchen. And like last year, I was super high on the guy in like the 12th round, but mm-hmm. in the fifth round, you're taking Jesper Pratt over, you know, I don't know. I mean, like like who's going to come off that New Jersey power play one to make room for Defoley? It considering that's probably the guy they got to put on that first power play. It's like I think it's him. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Adam, Adam a... Fox too. Another someone mentioned Adam Fox. Yeah, I, he's yeah. Um, yeah, if he's higher than round five, I like, and, and like, I can't believe how many people, like I said, NHL rankings come out, NHL.com fantasy rankings, number two defenseman, Adam Fox, get the fuck out of here. Like, what are we doing? I I don't understand. So uh, how much of that is, um, how much of that is quantifying like time on ice in categories leagues, right? Like, is that, is that what pushes him? I don't know. (laughs) <laughs> there's no there's no reason for it he's a ra- he's a ranger he is a new york ranger and they are like the second most valuable franchise and that's the only only thing i could possibly think of they're not a very fun team but i mean the kind of new you know they might be they might be more fun I, I, it's hard to know yet we, we could see but like i i just i could not tell you i really couldn't i i don't know okay. it's just he's a ranger i guess yeah he's just getting that that yankees tax that dodgers tax on his name uh, I like this, Matt. This is your your exactly, quote, yeah. DJ. Yeah, I wouldn't do it to be sharp. It's probably stupid. I think I think that's a really good quote. Yeah. I think that's that's evergreen to most of these uh these sports that we play outside of weekly winners, where I'm gonna galbrain the shit out of it. All right, that's the only I, that's the only spot. I've done zero. Oh yeah, I've done Fair zero enough. weekly winners. It's, it's very. I, I keep thinking about it, but yeah, I just I haven't put my brain there yet, and I don't. I'm already like ruined by the Pomeranian super flex. Like I can't add a third thing to that. Fair enough. Um, so. Rookie upside. This is, I put Connor Bedard on the cover. Um, yeah. We're having the discussion in Bambi <laughs> NBA right now with Wemby. We're having the discussion in NFL with Bijan Robinson, where basically the contest dropped and people were like, Hey, Bijan, we're going to take him at like the one Oh five. Now his ADPs come falling back down to earth a little bit. You can get them at that 111 through 109. Wemby, the contest dropped. You know, a couple people get them at 32. Then all of a sudden we push him up. We start seeing him going at 14. And now he's falling back into those 20s. Uh, do you see something similar with Bedard? Because this isn't your standard rookie. And I think co- comping him yeah. to those two generational talents feels feels fair or maybe not even doing him enough justice. So let's start with Bedard and then talk about rookies in general. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, um, we ran some stats on Bedard, and it was otherworldly. Like it was the shooting upside of no prospect we've ever seen. The you know the the ability is out of this world. The team is atrocious, and they're trying to add a couple pieces around him that might help. But um, we we yeah, we don't have a recorded player in the 
entire CHL that had a higher shot per game metric than him, which is really where you find a lot of your fantasy upside. So yeah, I think he's fairly priced right now, though. Um, just okay. assuming that it's going to be an obvious, I mean, his production is going to be high. I think it's going to be higher than maybe expected, but even with that at center, like the 30 range seems good. Um, it's, it's insane. It really like, and, and like, so you, you pull up McDavid here, like, you know, this, these stats, McDavid had multiple top round picks playing with him in Erie. Bedard was on one of the worst teams in the entire WHL and just willed them to like a round two playoff berth. And like, they were wanted to trade him. Like, no, I don't think they wanted to trade him. I think they wanted to keep him, but they're like, what do you want to do? And he's like, I am loyal to this team. I'm staying on this God awful team. Um, <laughs> it's amazing stuff. What he did. Like, it's truly um, like, like Dylan Strom was on a line with McDavid. DeBrincat was on a line with McDavid. These are like real right. NHL pl- quality players that he played with. And I don't know if Regina had a single player that will crack an NHL lineup ever that's um, a, that, that's that a great he, point. maybe there's a you know a young guy that i'm not thinking of but um definitely a different realm which, which also could boost his stats you know like they're like hey there's no one else like shoot as much as possible so maybe that also boosts him a little bit more but i, I do think that his mentality is is uh a shot first type player um and playing with taylor hall i think is awesome for him like that's the perfect guy to go get a guy that like can actually uh carry the puck pretty well and move it to him and then, like, they can feed okay. with each other a bit. So, I do think it's going to be a good. There's smoke right there. Is there smoke right there people. right now? Like with, Taylor Hall's. Taylor is Taylor Hall. Hall there already? Yeah. Yeah, he's there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's okay. I didn't Chicago. even know that. He traded okay. for him. It's. <laughs> it, there was a lot going on in every other sport, and uh, we, we can watch Bijan Robinson in shorts uh, dusting a linebacker, and that gets a, a million points of engagement, <laughs> but. Taylor Hall going yeah. through with Bedard, no one cares about. Yeah, uh, this exactly, is my favorite right? part of the NFL season. We're, we're watching, we're watching players like the, the coaches have to be telling them, "Do not touch the running back. If you injure this running back, yeah. you're done." And they're like, "Whoa, it. look at this running back! He's un- <laughs> unbelievable." It's like, dude, he's not wearing leg pads. They're not even trying to touch him. My favorite part of the entire um, video. It's great. This this one was the, I thought that original picture I brought up was this this was the stat I was looking for. We're at on thirty four goals in one hundred and thirty four games in junior, like just insane. It's insane and insane and special it, exemption yeah. as like a fifteen year old, sixteen yeah. year old to play and yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah. But you said you said his ADP is fair right now, so that's uh. How, did you guys end up? Because I, I yeah, asked you because yeah. we had a heated debate and then I it turned into me betting um probably too much money <laughs> on a on a 79.5 uh higher lower did you guys run the model yeah, on that think, one yet yeah. no uh okay. we we haven't but i'm sure it's gonna say it's i i likely believe it's gonna be higher no matter what on the model and the model is definitely going to be lower than what actually happens like it's normally pretty conservative with these things um especially for rookies um we have a couple, we have a new person too that's helping us with some of our stats uh, for the younger guys. That, so we're, we're, it's going to take a little bit longer, um, but I think it's going to come out a lot better. Um, but yeah, I think right around the 30 mark is where you want to take Bedard. Um, yeah, I think that's that's a really good cool. spot for him. And just, yeah, I, I think like the, the it's funny that like Wemben Yama and Bedard come in at the same time to me because it really right. is like, and I know Wemin Yama is a bit of, it would be like if Bedard was like seven feet tall or whatever, but I, on the same token, like this is one of the truly great players of a generation that we're going to be able to watch. And it's, it's exciting. And I'm not uh, wishing to go to Chicago because I'd like to watch him more, but it's still pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. I'm just flat out excited for that. It's the most expensive game in the season ticket package for the Canucks right now is the <laughs> Chicago game. It's yeah. crazy. Um, yeah, and, 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 yeah, and you get WHL, McDavid four so, times. Yeah, or whatever. It's, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, I mean, a lot of people want to see Bedard. Any other names, uh, late round rookies, anyone we should be targeting, um, just rookies in general in the NHL comparative to like what we're accustomed to in football? Do they take longer? Do they do the down and back yeah. thing more frequently? Um, you know. Yes. Uh, so um, it's a lot more like baseball, but not quite as crazy. Like uh, mo- I don't think there's more than maybe two or three guys in this class that are likely to start day one in the NHL regardless. 
Um, okay. So, like, is Fantilli going to start game one for um, Columbus? I think probably, you know. I, I, think, okay. I think maybe maybe you could convince me of four. Definitely not Mitchkoff. Mitchkoff's going to go back to Russia. So, like, after once you get out of the top four guys, and even with that, I don't think any of them are probably all that draftable. Um, mm-hmm. Other than, like, you maybe you could convince me to take a stab at, like, one of them, but – um like leo carlson never really projected that's the number two pick he didn't really project out to be a high fantasy asset likely like he's probably going to be more of a even at his peak hey. a later round is even yeah leo carlson uh, he'll probably be a later round guy in the future more of like a nick, nick mm-hmm. suzuki maybe in a year or two um the big uh the highest other rookie is gonna be devin levi i, I assume as far as adp is concerned uh buffalo sabers goalie um sabers have as you may uh, consider an ambiguous backfield, an ambiguous uh, goaltending situation where there's mm-hmm. three guys. Eric Comrie was very bad last year. I had some high hopes for him being useful. He was useless. Uko Pekalukinen has had a ton of injuries and a lot of, you know, just developmental concerns from where his prospect pedigree kind of projected him. But it sounds like they're going to go with two. I would still be surprised to see Levi over the 50 game mark starting in net, unless if he is actually as good as, you know, he can be. There's a seventh round goalie, a guy that went the college route and just took flight. Um, we'll see. I, I'm not not getting any exposure, but I actually think that he's a case where, like, if you're taking Buffalo guys, he becomes more valuable because you're assuming that Buffalo is really good if you're taking, you know, your Darlene and your Tage and you're kind of stacking. And that's kind of where, like, oh, this is a playoff team. It's because of Levi. Um, he might be a better correlated piece with Buffalo than, like, most goalies would be, I'd consider. Um, just because of like okay. the ambiguity, uh, a- ambiguousness. I don't know, really you know, what the right way to yeah. say that is. Ambiguity. Ambiguity. Okay. Yeah. Um, I can speak. Is what else? Is <laughs> is there a benchmark for attendees that we're looking at? Like you alluded to, oh, he probably won't get over fifty games. Is that like a, a kind of uh, like line yeah. in the sand for you, where it's like we want attendees that are going to get over mm-hmm. that? likely hold on we have a okay. chart i thought where did i put it did i get rid okay. of it it was made by someone in the discord and i tried to ask them if they wanted me to shout them out or not let's see if what they said they said yeah for sure so Mano 19 i don't know what his uh okay. his twitter handle is well i literally like exactly what i was looking to get was um because like i mentioned but one of the first things i said was the rankings are in order of what they did last year but that was it's pretty bad to say because like points per game or points per week with what we wanted and he did that like an hour after the contest was launched and he did it (laughs) for a few different positions and one of them was goalie and that was the one i was most interested in because uh there's you know a number of of nets that you're going to see the majority of them go to one goalie i could find that chart i thought i saved it and i can't find it must deleted it um DJ, I'm gonna hop in right, right now. So if you if uh, you have to dip yeah, in yeah, the draft, in, in. I will I will hold it down. I will hold down the fort here. There's six more spots no, here no, as no. we talk we'll, through we the should, rest of this goalie stuff. We should be okay. I'm just gonna okay. have to like sign back on to work, but like as long as yeah, the no Wi Fi is too. okay, I might just do that right now just to see. Um. So yes, yeah, Soros, Hellebuck, Georgiev, Sorokin, Ottinger, Vasilevsky. One more spot. Just wait. I thought Sisterkin. Oh, Omar Sisterkin. We're like the clear cut highest uh, points per week guys, I believe. Okay. And then um, there's a few guys that were just after it, like Skinner and uh, Kemper, Hart, uh, Bennington, Vanacek, but that could be a bit more ambiguous now. Gustafsson might get above. So like, I, I do think that there's like a pretty easy range of goalies that like are pretty, uh, and they're, and they're not even hard to like actually get into a mix. Like you could get three of okay. them and it's really not a struggle. Um, yeah. Let's see. Where are we at? Is it done? Yep. We're fill up. So we're good to go Where there. Like um, okay. And we rolled the one zero one because influencer one zero one. Okay. Wow. Wow. No one oh, runs here. Oh, maybe. we got moods here. Oh God. We got yeah, all the a, sharps are in here. Pretty stacked draft. Here. Yeah. Yeah. This is a, this all the... be a, it'll be a fun one just because we are going to see a lot of really good teams, so this should be fun. There we go. All right. Come on. Come yeah, we got the co-host in here. We got Blake in here. We got Brett Boy. We got Hockey Hooligan. We got Chip. We got GA. All the sharps. FF Child. This is uh. Here we go. 
Yeah, I'll I'll take. Uh, he's actually uh, he's actually my 104, buddy. Uh, yeah, after, I, after yeah. this, and like I said, I mean, I, the, the guy, the guy, the guy won the contest last year. Like Leon Dreisaitl was the guy you needed, and it, not many people had him. And it was uh-huh. all Leon teams, I believe, at the top. And I'm sitting here like he's the fourth, but I, I, I don't know. <laughs> if we were just went off the finals in football, you would take zero because didn't he have like one point in the finals? I think. Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah, something like that. Exactly. I, yeah, I think I'm right on that. I, I remember like having finals. In, Jefferson and it was just like I finished dead last. Cool. Oh, he goes McKinnon. <laughs> yeah, McKinnon is. I, 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 it's so hard. I mean, it literally is like picking between. I don't even know. It, it's like maybe the, honestly, this is. It kind of feels like you're in a what's it called the super flex drafts with like four quarterbacks. You know, you kind of got yeah. your like um your Mahomes. What is it Mahomes, Hurts, Josh, and then I don't know who four is Lamar, right? Yeah. I mean, you can like see some deviation there, and that like kind of makes sense because they're all really, really good in different aspects, and you might want to like spread those exposures, which I did not do. I yeah, just that's all a good the Mahomes, point. But um, <laughs> no, but that's a, but, I yeah. think that's a really good comp. Yeah, I think uh, it's a really good comp, and it works better than even just doing the comp of the wide receivers. Yeah, I'm just to take. I'm just gonna really. I just got to look at one thing for work. Don't worry. And this is my this is my break right now, so it's okay. <laughs> work is watching. Okay, we're good. Yeah, my my I had a, a meeting on Thursday, and um, I was talking about the golf because it was uh, last last week. What well, was two weeks ago now? It was uh, the finals. Yeah, yeah, two weeks ago. Yeah, it was two weeks ago. And and my manager was like, "Why do you care so much about golf?" And I was like trying to think of like how to explain that I was in. I had two teams in the finals for. And I was like, there's no way I'm going to, cause I was like, Oh, like, I just, you know, I just like, did you like bet on a golfer? I was like, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I told her I had like Rory cause he was in my lineup or whatever. Or whatever. She's like, Oh, I thought Rory did pretty well. And I was like, Oh yeah, he was okay. And I was just sitting there like I won fourth. I was like, I don't know how I could possibly like just describe that. Um, it's so funny. <laughs> yeah, especially right? when you get to, like, the more, the more, the more niche sports, it's like it's so much harder to describe what you, what you've done. And it makes you sound mm-hmm. like much more of a psychopath be like i drafted 150 it's, golf lineups it's like right you should get help <laughs> like <laughs> so did you okay. yeah so you did max yeah. the the albatross there because you yeah sorry i buried the lead off there yeah. what did you what did you end oh, up finishing bad. in the albatross uh I, I finished fourth which which was fourth, a nice. lot of fun and yeah it was really cool but it, it was one of those things where on friday i was in first by a pretty good margin and i'm just sitting there mm-hmm. like this could change my life and then uh yeah, yeah. I moved back to fourth and it is what it is. I had a chance at second um, on that uh, triple by uh, Fleetwood and Cam Young was okay. like, actually, I'm never going to make a putt. It's not never going to do it. Okay. <laughs> I, I I was away that weekend. So I actually, it was one of the few golf events that I saw absolutely nothing of. Wow. Crazy to see uh, the, the Ottawa little stack at the front here. The Stutzel plus Kachuk. Like, wow. That's mm-hmm. One of ex- like without looking yeah. at ADP because yeah. this is clearly my first draft. Without looking at ADP, I would have been like, "Whoa, that's I, I wouldn't have guessed that," you know. Yeah, it's still a little bit high there um, to take him at that point, yeah. but it's really hard to get that stack um, just just because both of them a bit after the twelve mark and getting both mm-hmm. of them like in round two, three or something is. I don't even know if it ever existed. Stutzel was already pretty high. He was awesome last year. A guy that I'm, I'm really high on him too as a player. So, uh, yeah, I think most of this is going pretty well in the right order. Um, I don't Bernard's really see any outliers or any teams that are. Well, Kale McCarr dropped off very far. Matt, Matt never wants to take Kale McCarr. I know that for a fact. And he's sitting there with the Beagle. You got to take that there. I mean, it's hard to hard to pass up on. So, yeah, I think we're going to walk into a pretty favorable situation. We didn't get Yossi, which is fine um i mean who do we like yeah i mean i think you take i think you take the best goalie and yeah you can that's igor for you yeah i think igor is still the the number one um their backup's jonathan quick i mean he shouldn't start a single a single game if they can let it and the rangers are actually good i think they're probably the best team in that mark 
I mean, you could go Hyman for the correlation. Like it is probably fine. They might not correlate at five on five too often, but they they also yeah, could. Like Edmonton let, does. Let's a let's lot pass of, on Hyman. A lot of change. I think Nylander is probably the guy then. Like I think he's the okay. best winger still available. And you okay. also kind of and you like him more than Sveshnikov. <laughs> You're Austin Matthews. Yeah, yeah. I think he's. I think he's a little bit better. Um, I mean. I, I don't I don't really I, I can't see any scenario where he has any sort of dip potential and um Carolina just plays a much boring style of hockey. Like they don't really want to be in up tempo high scoring games and Toronto does. So I just think like your okay. like perpetuity of outcomes, especially in the finals, like you really might find yourself in a situation where it's like, wow, Nylander is going in God mode and like um, I know someone asked a question about like uh Nyes and like, oh like Nyes, Martin or Matthews. Like I don't make those assumptions because we don't really know much about Matthew Nyes. Like what if Nyes is actually just not good? Like they're like, okay. they just decide because again, like you have some, if, if you're not one of the core four in Toronto, you're just going to be pretty interchangeable. So mm. I just don't really want to bet on a player definitely taking that big step. Like we saw with bunting last year, where it was like, Oh, bunting has to be the guy and people way overdrafted him. Uh, but we found mm-hmm. that he was a, actually a pretty bad value overall. So like, because eventually they moved him and eventually now, and now they moved on from him, you know, like this guy just like, while was fine. And like, you could have, like he had some weeks where he could have scored for you. Like he wasn't very good comparatively to like the 12th, 13th round tag he had. Um, like he was a, a bad value, not a useless player. Like is the way to put it. Um, and I think people are going to do that with knives. They're going to take him at the end of drafts and he, he might end up finding himself on the fourth line. He might find himself being scratched. I just don't think that's, necessary uh to try to get some correlation that really doesn't matter um when like mm-hmm. if they're losing in a game or i mean, I mean you look at like their um hockey this charts i don't know if you know what i'm talking yeah. about at all but it shows all the correlation between all the lines it's like nylander's just gonna play with the best players because he's gonna stay out there longer so like even right. if he's on the line and starting with Tavares, like he's going to play with matthews he's going to play with marner because they just those guys stay out there longer they tell them to they're like yep like other line mates get off Nylander stay for 30 more seconds. Um, mm-hmm. you know, stuff of that nature. So, um, yeah, this draft's going in pretty good order right now. Um, <laughs> yep. Yeah, all the goalies start to go. It, 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 it's the, it really is a third round goalie avalanche every time now, which makes sense. But like I said, I still think they're going a bit later than maybe they should. Um, someone asked about Rupe hints. Uh, yeah. Rupe Hintz is, you know, the, the problem with him last year was that the injury concern was pretty high and I, it's probably gone now. So I think you're fine to take him in, in you know, uh, but I, I just think he's going to fall. Like, I think he's going to fall down the ADP board because of the center situation that I talked about. So I'm not really, like, I'm not taking him where he is. I think I, I don't think I have a single draft where I've taken him yet just because of where his ADP is at right now. And it's just only being propped up by the J-Rob drafter which like it's fine right. to do that, but I don't think it's necessary. Like he's good, but he's going to fall. And I'm going to get him later. That, yeah, that's kind of how I felt about like Hyman's ADP when I was just staring at it there. Like, do you think there are all these natural correlation patterns emerging that are propping ADP for like a lot of guys like that? Like the, like the Marner and Nylander yeah. one, like they have standalone value. They can be drafted independently. I'm totally fine with that. Like they both have like 40 goal upside, right? But some of the other guys like that the Hyman feels bad, the Hints one feels bad. Uh, yeah. Getzel feels okay. Yeah, uncorrelated guess, Hyman. Like, yeah. Yeah. Kind of feels um yeah, Ooh, no, there's there's, there's nice some little, there's something like to that. it, but wait what? Eichel at forty one. That feels nice. Yeah. Like, would just yeah, Eichel, yeah. I mean Eichel is yeah, yeah. I think it's sort of like, did we? So the thing about Eichel was, did we find that Vegas is just going to be boring and that Eichel might actually be this player, like as what he was last year, or is Eichel going to find that next step as he get, you know, like a full year, you know, had a major next mm-hmm. surgery? Is he going to take a big step forward now? Like I think it's, you know, likely to, you know, be be the case. So I'm trying to get some exposure, especially when I don't already have a center. Um, he seems pretty good. Okay. So yeah, we're we're coming Vince. into the the next turn here, which center does feel plenty. There's a lot of good right players. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> it is. 
it's insane. It really is insane. Like the amount of very, very like like let's click on JT Miller quick. Like look how many points he had last year. And like people are just like let's uh are we oh, gonna take him? Let's make the pick yeah, first the and then um scroll yeah, scroll to the top. I you could take Evander Kane too, just, just because if he's fully healthy, Evander Kane's fine. Yeah. I mean, I think that's a, a good correlation. Do we like- the, the problem is well, he hits. So like you're getting a very like he's gonna he's probably gonna be like a top ten hitter too. Like he just didn't play enough games last year, but if he's back at hundred percent, I think he's um, you know, goal upside, shooting upside. Uh my eyes I'm go here. Really is that bad? End. No. Scroll down a little bit though. Who Nuge mm. Bouchard. We could do the Tavares correlation. Is there any correlation there? Um mm. You, it can be, but I don't think you need to take a center like, yet. Like, Dave is going to – I would just – you could keep Marchand if you want. I mean, I think taking a winger or a defenseman here is just the, definitely the play. Like, okay. how many centers are going – you don't – like, the way I would think about it is, um, it's like, you don't really want other centers outscoring McDavid. You know what I mean? Right, yeah. So, so like, it, like, yeah, they could factor into your uh, your flex, flex spot here or there. You, you get the right guy, but um, – I think it's too early. That would be again, kind of like taking Mahomes and then being like, um, well, you know, Burroughs here. It's like, well, yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> there's a cor- there's correlation. Like, it's like, oh, well, like, you, you know, if Burrow just keeps outscoring Mahomes, you kind of just wasted some value. Like it's just the, the bucket kind of situation that they talk about. Right. Um, so I, I wouldn't go center yet. Um, unless if again, like you, you have a guy like maybe if Jack Eichel was still there, you could be like, well, whatever, I'll make the case for it. Like this guy's so much better then you know is, is adp which is kind of a question mark to me anyways um but i think loading up on wing and like marchand you think no bergeron as long as he's still playing with Pasternak, i think that's fine I, I haven't gotten much of him yet but i mean he's still an elite elite player and mm-hmm. you can likely get some later mm-hmm. easy correlation but I think he, yeah I, i'm, I'm kind of it's a guy that's like he's fallen down adp a bit more i'm starting to try to consider um Okay. But yeah, I think Evander Kane is a guy that's uh, like last year, this was like a second round turn player and then just didn't work out. And now people are very low on him, but I don't think it's because of, let me look here. Do I have his points per game? Let's take a peek or points per week. I'm not sure if I have him. Um, Evander Kane was right around. So it was Tuck, Marner, Gensel, Evander Kane, Sveshnikov, Lion A, Connor for points per week. That, so I mean, like, that's, that's pretty good company. Range. Yeah. Really, cause... really good company. And like, but he did, his score isn't flashy. So when you click on him, you're like, this guy sucked. It's like, well, right. He sucked because he got hurt. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. But I think that's just a byproduct of what we were alluding to earlier when we were looking at the scoring in general is that like shots factor in and hits factor in so much more than our traditional mindset give us credit. It pushes guys up like that. It pushed up a guy like Tom Wilson, who was on your winning lineup. Right. Where it's like yeah. these guys will be per- perennially undervalued and underappreciated for that aspect of skill. Right. Yep. Yep. And I'm driving some Tom Wilson late because I mean, last year he missed a ton of time. If he's back at mm-hmm. full health, plus I think there's a power play role for him there. Yeah. Um, it depends what's on most- that ready. Like, yeah. Wait, what? Well, I was just going to ask, what's the most projectable year over year stat? Do you think like, is it hits? Mm, maybe yeah hits yeah. shots on i mean I don't, I don't think any of them are like crazy players outliers. do it uh, block shots too it's like yeah i think i think it's it's probably all pretty projectable but okay. i don't know if there's any that like it's probably I, I would assume hits are probably the high like more than like it's always the same guys shots right, on goal, that's i mean a- maybe a small deviation but like the deviations and shot on goal are only injury related like, like mm-hmm. a lot of players get risked in injuries and and stuff of that nature and like that's gonna that's probably gonna mess you up so what, we're two picks away yeah um, i feel like we're probably gonna have to take our first defenseman right maybe i don't think you okay. have to what scroll up to the top really quick all the way new just sitting there i mean you kind of i think it's like build out some edmonton stuff yeah but. Uh, i mean i just yeah i mean i wouldn't have taken cider anyways there so i'm not that worried about it um Let's see who GA takes. I don't want to. I don't want to tip any hands here. Okay. 
before because uh, he could be listening, just waiting for me to say a name and then just grab him because I mean that would be that would be <laughs> sharp, you know, that'd be the smart thing to do. So I'm just not gonna say a single player. I'm just gonna make him make a pick. He's gonna time out. That's okay. JT Miller. Okay, it was yeah, I was kind of thinking JT Miller, honestly. I mean, but I think you could take Nuge here too, because I think it's gonna be pretty rare to get him this late. Okay. Um we build, build out a little out. Edmonton, I mean, Edmonton, PP1. Edmonton's actually a, I'm pretty sure they're like one of the most favorable hmm. final schedule. Okay. I think they might be the top most favorable finals. And like if McDavid gets there in the finals. Uh, let's look at Edmonton. No, I guess they're they're three three, which is like where the do same your, as both teams. Yeah, uh, where do, where do your eyes go for for the next one here? Do we look at these wingers? Do we scroll down? Mark Stone. Uh, I think you either take John Carlson or Ehlers, probably one of the two. So if you want to go defenseman, mm. um. Take I mean, yeah, so John Carlson. Saw someone. Okay, we can take it. We can always wait. John Carlson. Yeah, John Carlson was one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, fifth last year, but he got hurt. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. If, again, I talked about this a little bit in the morning skate podcast. He legitimately had like a separate a severed vertebrae in his head from blocking a shot, and just he's good, good to go, no problem. You know, just give, give him a few weeks. He rubs some dirt on it. He's back. Um, so yeah, he was actually like pretty good until he got injured. Um, yeah, last year ADP for him was fifty two point six, and he averaged fantasy points per game nine point three. So it was Yossi, McCarr, Eric Carlson, Dalian, John Carlson. He was almost the same as like Hamilton and Morrissey and stuff. Okay, there you go. Did Morrissey go <sighs> already? Where does Morrissey go? right now so if he hasn't gone he's probably going like next pick yeah josh okay. morris he was just he was he was in god mode last year like mm-hmm. repeatable maybe but he's got a i mean he locked down the first power play spot which was the big question mark so last year everyone's sort of like you know john morris he could be really really good if he gets first power play and they're just like yep and, and then he was an all-star defenseman um <laughs> Yeah, Montour, there's a small concern of him missing time to start the year. That's kind of keeping okay. his ADP down, but I think he's a, still a, like a good pick where he's going, but he probably misses the first month of the season, I think. So I would keep that in mind when drafting, um, okay. but that is one of the better fantasy assets. Like I like, I hate to he say it, so I, good I, mean, in I the like most of these defensemen a lot. Yeah. Oh yeah, I like a lot of these defensemen more than Quinn Hughes by a pretty big margin, just because of the rates are just bad for Quinn Hughes everywhere. But a lot of assists, so he's not undraftable by any stretch. But like, you know, I don't know if there's a good comparison for for. He's probably more of like a correlation, Um, like a PP one correlation guy. Yeah, like something like that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it is funny to like, like especially people that bet hockey. It's like, oh, Quinn Hughes for a point minus like two thirty every night because he's so likely getting points, which you think is like, well, that's more valuable. But then you look at his like production in this system, and it just still just doesn't get there. Um, mm. Yeah, I think he was last year. He was, was yeah, him and Dobson were kind of like the same last year, more or less, like kind of the same range of like points per game, points per whatever. This guy had like what seventy six assist or points like it, it's bananas like how good this guy is but he doesn't really block he doesn't really hit he doesn't really shoot just hurts him yeah. enough i guess to keep him from like top contention so yeah he's just like a great roster. i don't think we great distributor at the top of a power play but that doesn't yeah. bode There's incredibly well for our scoring system yep yeah so we're we're um, sitting here with a, a a pretty. I think I think we're in a good spot. Um, goalies are going about as expected. Actually, while we've been recording, Philip Gustafson just signed a three year extension uh, with okay. the Minnesota Wild. So I think he's really cemented as the number one there. Solidified, um, yeah. Because they were mixing flowers in there so, for but, a bit last year, right? Yeah, yeah, and yeah, they both were good at times. Um, yeah, but yeah, the, the goalie. You know, coming up like Demko got hurt last year. I mean, he's definitely should be going a lot higher. Matt grabs him at a good spot. Skinner as well. I think that that's like probably still a bit low on where they're going to end up. 
um, and, and it's taking them early right now. Like a good example of like making sure, like I always just kind of like when I'm drafting, go position by position and kind of like look through really quickly to make sure I'm not missing anyone. Mm-hmm. Um, which, which as we jump back on the clock here is probably going to be useful. Um, yeah, Pete Trangelo is, is a good example of a player that you could probably take there. We're back on the clock. Um, I think maybe we wait on goalie. Okay. We are. I mean, we have one of the most elites. Yeah, click on winger really quick. We probably want to go wing here. It's Brusk, Zuccarello, Boy. Ben, Hall, and Chuskin. Would, yeah, Q, 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 someone. Debrus, Q, Debrus. Why not? We have like no Debrus right now. <gasps> second. Oh, uh, we, we got attendee. We got attendee. Well, we took Vanacek. Well, yeah. Vanacek's probably fine. I don't. I don't think that's wrong. Um, but he's maybe have more competition than we thought, but that's okay. I think he's a good upside piece because New Jersey. Are we going really to Brust good. with the next one? Um, yeah, you can keep to Brust. Yeah, click defenseman. Yeah, probably. Let's do that. I think. I mean, the, the, the bold case on DeBrusque is that he's a top line player. We already have Marshand, and like DeBrusque is a good rate shooter. It's just like he hasn't always had the role. So I think if we're considering him weapon. taking a bigger jump. It's supposed to be our secret weapon in the Zamboni. Jake DeBrusque. He was the guy. Yeah, wasn't he the guy with the worst ADP when we did the, the Zamboni oh, show? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, that, was, that was honestly like looking Second back, round Jake DeBrusque. Because it was insane. Like the, the order of Boston players to start was – in it cr- truly criminal it was hilarious people were like i gotta get trent frederick and it's like jabrusk is still there um so basically <laughs> if, if you're bullish on boston i think that like posternock and debrusk are the trigger guys on the first power play with marchand and like zaka mm-hmm. so you're probably not taking another boston guy probably unnecessary just getting those two and like assuming they stay together is probably pretty strong um where did how was DeBrusk last? Well, year? they have Vam Dream Dyke now too. I didn't expected. even realize that. Yeah, he kind of sucks. Yeah, so DeBrusk, yeah. I mean, so since he was going undrafted, he was he was actually one of the best uh players as far as value because he was like either undrafted or going um like in the last round. So he ended up being one of the better values you could have drafted at all. But mm. you know, he scored more like points per game than quite a few players that have already gone. Like he, I think he's really is like, and he's fallen a ton. Um, I think just, I don't really understand why he was like, like I said, with like the, the points, I don't really get why he was so high when he didn't have as many points. as other. Like, I, I really don't actually know what their ADP was to start. It seems completely made up, but that's fine. Um, and <laughs> the other point, and Matt uh, actually Moody texted me to mention this again, is if you were new to hockey and you joined the Zamboni last year, like, this is not the same roster construction as Zamboni. This is right. one, two, one, one instead of one, 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 two. So in the Zamboni, you were totally fine taking like five, five, you know, four, two or whatever, or even like one goalie, but that's not the same here. We're, Good we point. are uh, definitely waiting, getting wingers at a higher clip. Um, and the, so, the other thing I'd say to that is the correlation principles where people were trying to onslaught stack teams because it's playoff contest, yeah. playoff best ball, put it through. That doesn't apply here as much either. Like we're looking for the best players. And then if we happen to get a little bit of PP one correlation, that feels very nice as like a tie break, but it's not necessary. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, correlation was like a necessity and, Again, I mean, how many times did I say it? Like getting weird, like get, don't worry about, you know, getting weird with the playoffs and whatnot. And then who else but Florida goes to the cup final? It's like, yeah, you know, we should, uh, yeah, definitely can't wait for the Zamboni. And if we fill this as early as I think we're going to, I, I'm pretty optimistic the Zamboni could be much bigger. And it didn't fill exactly. Who won the Zamboni? They still made money on it. Mm-hmm. It's a good question. I feel like it was, oh, actually, I think it was, I think it was someone in the badge bros, but like, I didn't really know who they were or maybe they were second. Let's look. The winning team. I know was, Chip was up there on one of them. It was L A A K E 20. And then Chip was second. Oh, Lackey. Yeah. 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 Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I remember it was yeah. like a familiar name. Yeah. And then I was, yeah. I was pitiful sixth place. 
is <laughs> Yeah, I had LOL so much Mary. for us and they were they were bad. Yeah, you can't win them all, but I'll take 3000 on on a lineup that's the entirety of my NHL best ball entry fees just in, in that one Yeah, team. there so you go. Everything else at that point was profit. Um, um yeah, so what are we I'm looking. I'm, I'm scrolling yeah, around here. Is, are okay, we in okay. the range this, this where is falling, we go ADP? Falling in a good spot. This is falling in a good spot. We're getting close. Um, I think, okay. Again, I, I don't want to tip our hand at anything right now. Uh, Borensky was a guy I was highly considering there, and he goes, which is which is fine. Um, okay. But yeah, I think we can largely throw ADP out the window. Probably take my favorite, Perfect. you know, couple guys here. Um, Let's do it. I just I just don't want to tip our hand because I feel like this team's getting it's like really really strong right now and you get the 101 which is such a big benefit that I don't want to like you know I don't want to like Pete over at your stream here and getting have people just sniping you I don't know if you watched best ball breakfast this morning but someone was like I, I missed most of it but I got there right when the Russell Wilson thing happened and I was like oh boy like you just can't telegraph Classic. that in that situation um the football so stuff I'm fine funny. with it I can telegraph it because we stream so many of them I could talk through it. If I get sniped, I can deviate. Out here, I'm kind of fucked. I'm I'm treading water at the best of times. Okay. All right. Let's hear some of the so best. I think you're taking, right Darcy, you're, you're you're taking Q Kemper right now. That is an okay. egregious that we're going to get Kemper this late. You see him okay. goalie. Oh uh, yeah, I think you froze. Okay. So definitely do that. Pull up goalie in general. I don't think wait, we have two already. Oh yeah, we took advantage. Yeah, we got I still two. think you just take Kemper here. I mean that is. And then we shut yeah, it click, down. Yeah, so get, let's just goalie. get our third goal and be done with it. Yeah, click. So okay. yeah, click defenseman. Hold on. Okay, you yeah, know you're good. Um, take Shea Theodore. I think we take. I, I think we take Theodore. Oh, there he is. He's like this. Okay. Yeah, right there. Yeah. Um, you pull up wing. Yeah, I don't think there's anyone else that really. I mean, there's a couple guys at center I don't hate here either, but like, there's just no need to do that. Winger is pretty pick clean at this point yeah the one i was gonna ask you about was taylor hall yeah the one i was gonna ask you about here was patrick kane like where are we taking patty kane not knowing like is he is he washed is he old is he done is he (laughs) wait you pull could you pull up matt's team really quick i'm sorry yeah patty kane's completely dead he's probably not even gonna play this year um click on we'll get really what's matt's team really quick oh he had he had eichel Uh, he's mad he just texted me saying uh, some naughty things because I think he wanted Shea Theodore. He, he, oh, he had Michael Amarch. So, oh, sorry, Matt. I didn't realize. You were going to take a third defenseman this early. Get out of here. Sorry, Moods. I was texting back. Um, yeah, no, Patty Kane is I, – I mean, he, it seems pretty like no one really knows right now, but he had a pretty big injury at the at that uh, going into the offseason, and most people projected him not to start the season. And then I heard he was hmm. skating – so I don't really know, but um, yeah, he had an okay would, year would, last year. Like he feels too, he feels today. too young to retire. No, not retire. No, uh, but let's look. Yeah, July thirteenth, the curious case of. I mean, he's still he's unsigned, which is because yeah, of the that's injury. what I mean. Yeah, um, yeah. I don't. I really don't know. Let's look up injury. If there's any update because the original diagnosis was like this is a guy that you sign and then you put him on uh your like uh I'm trying to think of what they what the actual term is but your ltir, term, LTIR, LTIR you yeah just, yeah yeah and you just bring him back for the playoffs it was like probably right. the projected case for him um his surgery was expected four to six months and that was in june so that puts him at end of december um, I think likely for his age. So I'm just putting him in undraftable right now. Like, I don't know, maybe, okay. maybe but like last round, whatever, but yeah. Okay. D- disappointing. Yeah. Matt, Matt, Matt said he was, what do you say? <laughs> yeah. Matt also said he, Patrick Kane's undraftable. Um, okay. which I, yeah, like I said, I, I do agree undraftable. Um, as I, as I was searching, I knew there was like a lot going on there, but yeah, I would say don't draft Patrick Kane. Um, Jay Theodore. Yeah. That's- way too low. Matt kind of brought him onto me. Another guy going way too low. Lucas Raymond right there goes in the 12. 
I that was my highest exposure to start because he was again going undrafted or in the last round. And this is like one of the supreme young players in the league that just sucked last year. Like, uh, you know, mm-hmm. a lot of different reasons, but I think if you're assuming the Red Wings got better, it's probably correct. And that's going to really benefit him. Like this was a rookie that came in the league and torched it and then had a one down year sophomore slump. Like I'm, I'm buying back in um, this. He was going in like the six. Actually, I could probably look, I know he, he ended up being like one of the absolute worst values last year. Yeah. He was right. I think it's 67 ADP early comparatively. He went as high as 52 overall. Um, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, if you're so, going to paint a narrative for that, like yeah. a, yeah, if you're going to paint a narrative for like a potential bounce back candidate, it would be a young dude who was, he was pretty close to like runner up or third runner up in the Calder his first year, right? Something like that. Cause yeah. I think his first year yeah, he was, was right the there. Kirill, yeah. It was Kirill's year. And then I think he finished second or third yep. in Calder and then no, you know has down year. And then he comes no back this year. Team might be slightly better and he'll be PP one, like just through and through. Oh yeah. hundred percent. I mean, he is. Okay. And and like the, the problem, if he kind of lost his like maybe trigger role in a sense, but I, I think that's only going to get bigger as he gets, you know, more confidence and gets better in this league. Like, yeah, it, I expected him to be a bit more of a rate shooter um, last year, and he just wasn't. But that can yep. change. Oh my god, I just typed in Raymond Raymond. That's good. Lucas Raymond. The uh, the absence of uh, Bertuzzi the there yeah. too. Does that increase his shooting rate on the power play, or you don't think that matters? It it it, it could. I wouldn't say it's like. Yeah. Definite. Let's actually let's pull up their power play to end the year. It's, yeah, so yeah, he missed what eight games last year. Raymond did. Let me just pull up the Red Wings quick. I wonder what they did. I mean, it was really Perron, and um, they started the year with Vrana, and then he, they traded him. I don't know. If, you know, he had a lot of. Yeah, he, he went to the. He went to rehab during the season, so then they traded him to get a fresh start. So that was, you know, kind of a spot that opened back up, got taken away again. So their power play to end the year was Raymond, Chason from that front, Sider, Perron, Larkin, which would put him in like one of the two trigger spots. Right. Chason's gone, I believe. Here we are. Yeah. We're clock here. I don't know. Um, oh, we're up. Okay. What do we think about Bo Horvat here? That feels like really late. We could uh, also do Morgan Riley. Is fine. there any Toronto correlation there? Or you, we gotta keep scrolling. You could do the you could do the Horvat, just do Horvat Dobson too, and you could just finish up, you know, center defense, and then we could just draft all wingers from here, and we get a fun sure. correlation. I, I kind of like that. Then we're literally just okay. gonna draft wingers to finish it, which is maybe a little bit, you know, it's fine. Like we have what we have three pretty yeah, high. Three, four, three, I, three. I normally, you know, I, I I this is it's probably the first time I've come into this situation where I've done this, but. Um, mm-hmm. I think when you're already getting such a boost from McDavid, like maybe getting a little bit different than the normal McDavid drafter, who's going to just hammer winger might end up benefiting us. Like if we get peak weeks from Horvat, we get peak weeks with McDavid and use your Hopkins, um, in our flex, like that's fine. Um, okay. Yeah. I think, I think it's definitely going to be a very unique structure and we're getting like a, a good, like Horvat and Dobson make a ton of sense because those guys are actually like good like that's the power play. I mean, that is, that is the goal of the power play is those two. So I, I, I have not been able to get them together yet though. Um, but no, I think that's All three right. really well, here we go. defensemen. Oh, oh. All right. I like I it. I think. Okay. Uh, so we, yeah, this is interesting. Okay, cool. Yeah. I mean, we went a little bit with the correlation route here. I don't know. Horvat's price tag just probably because he's a center, but like if he's, 144 for a guy who almost had 40 goals last year. I know he fell off a cliff when he joined New York, but you know, get him a year to get settled or like give him an off season to get settled. And then now comes back out. Ooh, a little Josh Norris yeah, like there. What? Like Josh Norris was supposed to be a somebody last year. Yeah. Yeah. The, so the Josh Norris, like, again, if you're drafting Josh Norris, you just have to play the bull case and the bull case is that he gets right back on that first power play. You know, he's right back in the rate mm-hmm. shooting spot, but like, missing an entire year basically 
and he missed time the previous year is concerning. So like, yeah, I think I have one of 15 right now and I, I would, you know, I'm going to get more of him, but it is, I mean, there's a lot of chefs in that kitchen now on that first power play. So like them going and getting Tarasenko may be nervous about him because I think that, like That's that cool. kind of might signal that he can't go right back on that first power play spot. Um, yeah, pull, yeah, pull up Ottawa there. Ottawa's like the best bad team in the league. It's like, how serious are they? Um, yeah. Well, I mean, Drake went in like the eighth round in this contest. Is that normal? Like there's all these guys are getting drafted pretty high. Yeah. I love Drake Batherson, um, but there is a suspension concern with him because of the Team Canada stuff, which is... Oh, interesting. I don't... I, well, again, you just don't know. I mean, he was on that team... Right he could have literally not been there. Like we just don't know. And Mm -hmm. it's really hard to say like, Oh, like I'm not going to take a guy because of a suspension. We have, it's not even like Elvin Kamara where like, we know he punched the guy in the face and is going to get suspended. We're like, we just don't know. Some of the players came out and said things. Some didn't, I don't know. But I think that in his current iteration, he is a good value. Like that's Ottawa team should be a very fun team. A lot of goals, a lot of goals against a lot of rate shooting um it's just like clearing out that power play is impossible and um i was drafting shabbat a lot now shabbat's gone way up the board i might and it's funny that shabbat and then chikrin goes next pick it's like i might start getting in a little bit more on jacob chikrin who is a really good rates player and like if he has that first power play role he's way undervalued like they both are they're both undervalued mm-hmm. but we don't know who's on the top power play and like what right. if it's jake sanderson i mean they literally have jake sanderson too it's like I don't know this how this team can be team. fun, man. That that team does sound like a lot of fun on paper. They do. I'm like, I mean, they really don't like they. They should play bad defense overall, I assume, but mm-hmm. I don't know. I really don't know. Like, look at that second power play right now. Like that is unbelievable. Yeah. Like Kubalik is also a really, really, really gifted goal scorer. Yeah, I, I don't. I mean, it's that is a top power play on a lot of teams, and it's. What was the trade last that last year that got rid of uh, Debrinket? That was like three weeks ago, or three weeks ago. Yeah. What was that trade? Uh, that was Kubali came over, but it was all draft picks. Other than that, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Um, right. it they they it was a first round pick, but it was the worst of the of Boston and Detroit. So whatever one ends up being later on. Okay. Plus Kubali. And I think another pick. Okay. But yeah, they lost on that trade. Just... Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so now we're we're looking at having to take a. We're wing looking in. at wings. Um. Yeah, let's not tip our hand, but there's there's a, there's still a couple guys here I think are pretty. You can make a bull case for. Um, um, Kuz went at 106. I was like, oh, that's... this is our sneaky Kuz time, and I was like, that's probably where he should be going. It's probably yeah, still think, good value. I think 106 is the right spot. Well, so Tom Wilson would have made a ton of sense, but we, we did not get him there. Uh, I would cue Nino Niederreiter um, okay. right there in the Winnipeg spot. Um, again, their power play is pretty ambiguous. He was on that first power play. He's an excellent rate shooter. Um, you might think with Dubois going out, like who's going to take the obvious top power play role? Like, I think it could be him. Um, mm. So I've been kind of loading up on Nino. And then I think you could, I mean, I've been taking some Lafreniere. We could take, I'm okay. not, man, I'm probably not taking knives. I, I'd, I'd rather get Lafreniere. Yeah. I, mean, what the, I think what, talent. Uh, what's the Landis Cognitive? Okay. Zero games, 100% not playing. So wow, really? Not, Again? Yeah, yeah. That's yep, so scary. The year, yeah, I'll for the entire year. I'll, I could double check on that, I guess, but I'm pretty sure they already 100% said he is not gonna play what a shame will miss 2023 season 2024 yep well back to back here like a, a knee transplant cartilage transplant in knee will miss 23 24 season yep thought so yeah mm. other people are saying it too so uh yeah i think the law friend year case pull up the rangers on the on uh what's it called uh hockey oh my god daily face off daily face off yeah. Oh, they got the yeah. They had that young kid line as their third line last year that was yeah. kind of going nicely for a bit there. Yeah, but again, pull up the Rangers. We see 
you know, so it's kind of like Kako, they pick up Wheeler. If, you know, I, I mm-hmm. kind of see Blake Wheeler. First off, I think he's not good. Um, I see him much more as like a veteran third liner that can okay. pass. So I kind of think like Kako, Wheeler, Hedl, maybe. I think Lafreniere is the guy they bump up to the top line. Um, the entire coaching change seems to be like, we have to get this guy going. The talent is there. Um, he came into the league as a guy that like seemingly projected to be uh, not only a top line player, but like an elite top line player. And it hasn't happened. Yeah. Um, scroll on to the first power play quickly because they, they lost two pieces of that with the Tarasenko. Um, you know, so I, I think if they put Wheeler there, I'll actually go and I can't remember right now who the heck's their coach. Sign a new coach. Rangers coach. Oh yeah, they signed Laviolette. If, if, if I will actually go and punch Laviolette in the face if he puts Blake Wheeler on the top power play over a guy like Lafreniere. Like I'll just have to kill him. Um, <laughs> it should like Lafreniere should be there. I, I just I don't know what they're doing if they put Blake Wheeler in that position. Um, okay. So I think I think you just make the bull case on Lafreniere in in the late rounds because of the elite talent. And well, like I got I really they excited put, when they. They flirted those Horvat rumors, Horvat to the Rangers rumors, and they were talking about Lef- Lafreniere as the as the bring back. And I was like, man, that's a heavily discounted. That'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah, no, I, it 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 would be one of the. I mean, I don't think he's going to like legitimately fizzle out of the league next year. Mm-hmm. But we're talking about a guy that hasn't cracked forty points yet, going into his fourth year. You know, he's only twenty one. That that says right now his birthday. I saw twenty two at the beginning of the year lot of time but man i would be i would be blown away if he just could not figure it out and and like i said it really feels like that's the coaching change is that gallant had no ability to get these young players to produce and they don't want to give up on them because like you said they'd be taking a massive discount on this guy so i'm going to buy in on you know raymond i'm going to buy on i'm off in here those are guys that i just think in their best iteration are going to be smashes at adp I like it. Cool. Yeah. And there are some names. We've reached that point in the draft where it's like the winger names kind of fall off a cliff, but like there are yeah. still some solid defenseman names. There's still some solid center names like new Nick oh, yeah. Suzuki in round 15. Like, I mean, yeah, probably not a great <laughs> format, but like as you're, that's the guy with center, Caulfield. Yeah. Like yeah. I, I've been taking a lot of Caulfield. So I just been grabbing like it's, I, I think the thing about Suzuki is um, we see a lot of players that I think come into the league with this pedigree of not shooting and end up getting there because of the role. And I think yep. we kind of started to see that at the end of last year. Like it's not to any, I mean, what was his shooting percentage? That's kind of the, normally the best indicator of a guy that like had any willingness to shoot. So he's 12% on his career. It got up to 16% last year. So um not shooting enough, but I think that like him getting to like a 200 shot on goal number with his ability would be like, you're really talking about a guy that's going to smash ADP. And I just think the, you know, the, if he gets injured, that team is dead anyways. So like, you're probably screwed mm-hmm. with anyone you took. Oh, you're on a clock. Um, so players I've been taking at this point, uh, number one has been by Duclair. Okay. He's on the bottom of that I can list get on right board there. With that. Uh, did he sign a big deal or was he a trade piece or he's yeah he, he signed over in san jose i don't know what the exact mm-hmm. contract situation was but if i mean just like after you after this pick is made or actually you might not do it right now because it's going to close the draft but if you pull up the sharks in general it's yeah. it's like i mean <laughs> it's sort of like okay so and they, I, I what did only one player got picked who i think carlson right. probably doesn't I mean I if he starts there, whatever. If he finishes there, I'd be shocked. So they might have zero players that get drafted. And that's just wrong. Um Duclair is an elite rate shooter. He was an elite rate shooter. He was awesome in the playoffs when they gave him a role. He's definitely mm-hmm. going to be a top power play guy. They don't want to give it to LeBanc, obviously. So like Duclair signs here. We've seen this exact situation happen before where do du- like Duclair signs in a place and scores 30 goals and is mm. unbelievable and if he's with carlson especially like if for whatever reason man like <laughs> this could be uh, but again like every draft you're taking the bull case on a player you're not ever going to go into a draft and be like well i think this guy could suck but i'm going to take him anyways right i mean you're, you just have to be drafting at like what is the peak 
And the peak for right. Dwyer is, I think, legitimately 30 plus goals. Like he definitely, definitely has that ability. Um, which like at 2021, yeah, is... 30, 31 goals, just it's right there for you. Like you can see the path. <laughs> this team is not going to just never score. They have Logan Gutcher, Thomas Hurdle, no matter what. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, that sounds, yeah, I like that. Well, I mean, that, that's kind of like, what's the thesis of the archetype that we're looking for late here? And that seems like a really clean path to being like, it's either going to be underdrafted team where we're going to get first power play like potential from a player, or it's going to be like attack on correlation piece to a potential power play role, right? Like that's kind of like the yeah, two archetypes yeah. of, you know, 16th round winger. But yeah. I do like the Duclair narrative is, you just spun. Yeah. yeah. It's exactly what they were missing on the power play. It was, it was Duclair. Mm-hmm. They went out and they said, we want to get, and, and this is what happens with a lot of free agents like Tarasenko too. It's like, Will a player sign a deal with a team that's obviously not a playoff caliber team to try to boost their stock for the following season? And that's what Duclair did. Duclair said, I'm going to bet on myself. And you know what? Maybe he gets traded at the deadline. Like, But if he gets traded at the deadline, he's probably going to a team that lost the player that would play in Duclair's role. So like, you might get him in the play. He might go to Edmonton, for example. Like, We don't know. And if he does, it's because... You know, Evander Kane, or maybe not, we don't want Evander Kane to get hurt. So Zach Hyman gets hurt, and they just want to fill his role with, uh, he might not be the perfect example, but the the point I'm making is, like, he might get moved at the deadline, which might be part of why they signed him, and that's probably only going to help him even more. But I've Mm -hmm. heard people make that case of, like, well, what if he's not there because they trade him? And it's like, that's good. We've now won, and we're now in the playoffs with a probably, you know, an even better situation. Right. They, um... The depth at center was extremely illustrated in this draft by just looking like, hey, last year's rookie of the year didn't get drafted. Like Kuznetsov was nasty back in the day. I don't know if that's relevant anymore. But like Zgrass, like, I mean, he's my favorite player in hockey, period. Like, I love that dude so much. Um, Yeah, I mean, like, just look at the names that are going undrafted here. You know, Barzell, like, former runner up rookie of the year. Like, crazy. It's crazy. I mean, a lot of these guys aren't the highest rate shooters. I mean, but like Boone Jenner is a good rate shooter. He does hit. He does everything you want. Uh, Logan Cooley was mentioned by someone in, in the chat, like a guy that was is probably has the upside of a top center in this league, but is a rookie, so mm-hmm. it might take time. Fantilli should have been the second overall pick, goes third. Uh, there's, a, there's so many cases. Like, there's so many guys here you could pick. And like, could we have been better off not taking Horvat, taking one of these guys, grabbing a winger? The only reason I'd say maybe not is because I don't think there was a winger in that range that we missed out on. Um, that like it's like, oh no, we didn't get, you know, I don't care about Lee. I said Blake Wheeler is literal trash. I would never take him. Um yeah. Hagel, whatever. Raymond is maybe the guy that I'm like, yeah, could have taken him there. Uh Besser, I I have my concerns, but I, you know, I think he's a good stacking piece with other guys. It's like I don't really see a winger we missed out on that I'm like, oh crap, like. We didn't get Jordan freaking Eberle. Like, no. Nah. So, like, I'm I'm fine with what we did there because, um, yeah, I think Nugent Hopkins might might have been the guy that, like, if we didn't take him, we could have been better off. But, like, the correlation, I think, is unique because Nugent Hopkins is largely going much earlier than that. Like, Right. I mean, Good point. Like, this, this guy had over 100 points last year, and I don't see any reason he should get worse. Right. He's still on we that put ourselves power play. In the- yeah, we put ourselves in a bit of a corner by like this uh six through eight round right here with like um not getting a winger in this grouping. But I think we came out of it okay. Like yeah. kind of like we took some good high upside shots with the last three. Yeah, Van Vanichek actually that's a funny one to actually look back on, but um yeah. Yeah, uh, it, it's it's like, is Vanacek the number one in New Jersey? And if he is, then he's a steal where he's going. But if they, for some reason, give it to Schmid, then we could be screwed with that pick. But we literally have the best goalie in fantasy. So who cares? Right. Cool. No, I like it. Yeah, that was fun. Fun first draft, DJ. That was, uh, yeah. that was good. Um, I mean, my biggest takeaway right here is just look at the depth, depth at center. I mean, that's... That's wild to me. That depth at center feels, yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah, a, a lot of guys that, most of those guys are not like your, you know, uh, format specific perfect fits, which is why they might slip, but all of them have peak upside with their ability. Like Zegris has hat trick games in him. He just has to shoot right. more. So um, 
Yeah, a couple of questions I see on the side about the two goalies versus three. Um, so yeah, uh, if I, I have one draft where I have Sorokin and Soros, that's it for goalie. Um, you know, I got both of them well after what I think their ADP should be. I'm done. Um, anything in, in that vein of, of probably those top like six or seven goalies, if you get two of them, probably the only situation where I'm done at two and it okay. will happen. And when it does happen, I don't think that means that you're absolutely a hundred percent hammering any specific position, but like more than likely, I think it's probably wing. You just grab the eighth guy. Um, but as you're showing, like the center depth is so high that like if the wing doesn't work out in the last round, mm -hmm. stick a center. Like you're just thinking like who's going to get in my flex. You have seven wingers okay. to fill two spots. So like, you know, four or eight, uh, three, two is totally fine. Okay. Yeah, I like it. Great stuff, man. Um, appreciate you coming on. Appreciate you doing this, giving us the lay of the land uh, for the initial best puck classic stuff. Um, you guys know where to find him. He's always hanging out in the Discord and uh, on Twitter, DJ underscore Mitchell 94, puckluck.com, Morningscape Pod with Matt. Uh, anything else you want to sneak in there and or say before I ask you the definitive parting questions? Uh, yeah. Uh, let me just let me take a look if Matt said anything that we should do. Oh, he said Duclair was a cap dump, not a UFA. He was traded. That's right. He was traded okay. over there. But again, they that, that was because Florida needed cap space. That's right. Um, so mm -hmm. we, we, it's kind of it's kind of like I don't know what shows do it, but they kind of have that fact checker. I know it's on ESPN. They're like, I'll check our facts. So th thank you, Matt, for pitching that in. Um, <laughs> That's our fact. We're gonna checker. have yeah, we're gonna have a podcast this week with all player takes mainly. Um, just kind of going through. So I know someone asked about Saros. He'll be on the list. I'll add him right now. Um, I have a pretty big list. Bedard's going to be the, the focal point. We really want to go over his, um, his stuff in general because we already did it and ran a bunch of numbers. Um, yeah, Puck Luck's going to have everything you need. And I think if you're drafting 150 and you're not using the brick caddy um, mm -hmm. in any sport, like if you're an avid drafter and underdog and you're not just taking advantage of like the best tool to ever exist. You're just, in my opinion, a fool. I don't think you use it. So sorry to call you a fool on your own show. Maybe here. Uh, but I, I do have it. I have it. You have I it. just don't use I, it on stream. Yeah. Yeah. So I use it not every single draft either, because at some point I feel like I just like, you don't, you know, if I'm at the gym doing a cardio club or whatever, but like if I'm actually sitting down doing drafts and like, you have to, it, it's just be foolish. So with hockey, I think it's even bigger because the, ADPs are going to be much less efficient over time. So you can really have the rankings, have it all, you know, adjusted and, and really fit a lot of parameters that um, are going to make your advance rates much higher. Like it did for me and many others that used it. Um, that's probably it. Let's get to the last question. Cool. Yeah. The last question is Please. we alluded to it off the top. There were two players that really did it for you last year. There was Hughes and Carlson. Those were kind of like the two guys you were exposed to that popped from real late that you could do. Where are we leaning so far this early in draft season? Who are the two guys we're targeting in those kind of like big, big movers, big movers and shakers going to be the difference makers for us right yeah. now. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're losing Roman Yossi, but that would, that, I mean, <laughs> right next to each other, Carlson and Yossi right now. Which is funny. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Roman Yossi, I think I took in like every single slow draft I started from day one. I just was like loading them up and just continuously every draft and we're going to lose that. But like, I think that's a guy that should probably be going at like the 15, maybe ADP and he's still in the thirties. Um, mm -hmm. And then, you know what? I'm going to say a random guy we didn't discuss once and it's going to be Owen Tippett. Um, okay. That's a guy that uh, is largely forgotten about. He's jumped a ton. I still have him as one of my highest exposures and it's probably only going to go up from there. Um, people forget about Owen Tippett. And mm -hmm. what, what I would say is nope. maybe one of the better uh, guys in general for um, like this format. Okay. And you say that because of like what he brings in terms of like uh, hits and, and shooting rates, blah, blah, blah. That's what makes him good for this yeah. format. Yeah. I would say, what is going on? Oh, I'm typing on the wrong, typing on my work computer, <laughs> not my laptop. I'm like, why is this yeah. not working? Um, um, refresher on Tippett. Tippett was drafted in the top five or 10, something like that by Florida yeah. and then was traded to Philadelphia. Correct. 
Yeah, tenth overall yeah. in 2017, and just never yeah. found his role. Again, they kind of gave it to a guy like guys like Duclair and others for a while. Um, but like when he was out there, it was like like he was a guy that in DFS you were like Tippett's in tonight and he's in the top six role. He's minimum salary. He's a must play. Last year, yeah. what he had okay. 231 shots on goal in 77 games. Pretty ridiculous stuff. Um, okay. I think his 30 goal upside is really high. They're going to give him top power play. If they keep him and connect me together uh, on the power play, that's going to be a really, really good late round correlation. That could be very valuable. Okay. Tippett went 100th overall to doc doom in our nice. draft right there. So shout out doc doom being ahead of the curve, taking him in the ninth round there. Yes. Yeah, so, someone, someone just took his ADP peak uh, so far. It might get higher than that. It might, but like that is, Definitely the highest I've seen him go by a lot. I mean, this he was a guy I was Sharp getting room. again. Like in, I mean, I think I took him. Let's uh, you know what? Let's just take a peek here. I think I took him in the first lobby I had. Let me look. Give me one second. No, he was the second one. But this is like twenty-seven goals last year. Oh, but I didn't give him the second lobby either. I'm a fraud. <laughs> Third lobby. Owen Tippett, He's yeah, on there took him at you. 158. That's where he was kind of going, but he was going in like the you know one. So 158 would be the 14th round. He was like a 14th wow. round ADP guy, and now he's going to rise up to like the 10. So wow. I think it's going to nice. you know that's going to probably get be where he lands, and like that's a guy that I would also get early and often. Cool. I love it. Closing line value there. Um, people searching for more closing line value as alluded to some player takes pods coming this week um, from DJ Sabes and Matt. Uh, go check that out. Morning skate pod. Thank you for being here, DJ. Thank you for being the definitive best puck thought leader. And uh, we'll do some more of this as we go. Uh, we'll definitely get you back on for the dailies. We did some of the daily stuff last year, talked through some of the correlation patterns of the daily stuff we'll do uh we'll do a daily one and we'll make sure we do a a, a playoff one when that rolls around um yep, yep. any parting words for the people uh no just get, get in the lobbies now it's, i think it's gonna fill a little bit earlier than expected and if we mm. fill it even earlier we can maybe get these under, great people at underdog to give us another competition i'd love to have <laughs> one more format because uh just give, give us a five dollar just people I, I don't know what it is the difference between ten and five dollars but like everyone i talk to that's like i would max it but it's ten dollars i'm like give, right. give us five dollar give us a five dollar <laughs> and let's go love it all right man appreciate you being here we will be back uh tomorrow for baseball uh Numi will be back i'm not sure about nez nez is on vacation this week so it'll be hit or miss he probably won't be here with us but we will be back on Underdog HQ if you're not following that one. Link in the bio below. If you're not playing on the platform with the people like we were just doing, uh, promo code MLB at sign up, 100% match deposit up to 100 USD. That's DJ Mitchell, and I am John, and this is everybody's favorite time of the show. The end. Peace.